Let's have a little bit of a chat about the coronavirus because coronavirus is something that is affecting everybody right now. It is a global worldwide thing. Um, and for people with chronic illnesses, it is, you know, obviously a really worrying time for everybody. Um, mm -hmm. So, so Sneha, where, whereabouts are you at the moment and how is it kind of affecting you? Yeah, so, um, so I am also classified as an immunocompromised individual. Um, and so I think, you know, initially it had been incredibly terrifying for me and it still is because, you know, the more you hear about it and the more you hear stories, it becomes even more anxiety inducing, at least for me. Um, and so I think, you know, the biggest thing, it's, it's affecting every part of my life right now, as I'm sure it is for everyone around the world. Um, but, you know, for me specifically, my university is um, now going to be entirely online, which is bizarre to me because last year we, you know, struggled to even cancel one day of school because of, <laughs> of, of, of a snow day. Um, and I go to a large public university. Um, and so it, it brings in an additional uh, challenging dimension. And so I think another thing is, is, too, is that I currently cannot go home to my parents as well because my dad is a provider and he um, has seen coronavirus patients. So mm -hmm. for fear that he is a carrier because of the really easy to catch it is really, um, he does not want me in the same uh, location as he is. And so it's been kind of tricky, too, because I'm kind of stuck where no one is at in my college, uh, college town. Um, so that's been interesting as well. And another thing is, too is that I am in between infusions um, and it's starting different infusions. And so I really need to get on another infusion um, because my previous one caused an allergic reaction. And but I'm just having to kind of wait this out because that will make me even more immunosuppressed. Um, and so I think that's also been interesting. And I quite frankly don't even want to go inside a hospital right now mm -hmm. um, because of the fear of, of COVID patients. Um, there as well so I think that's been hard and also just my day-to-day -day things that I do like climbing um going to coffee shops and everything like that has been it's just been kind of hard to be in my house even though I have you know went through a period of about five years of of real isolation this is this kind of hits differently because right now I'm able to um you know like go outside and, and climb and stuff like that whereas earlier I was really sick and I didn't feel like going anywhere so isolation was a little bit easier at that time yeah, definitely. And I think, um, and I don't know if it's the same for you, but I, I kind of feel like it's not just the virus that's scary, but I kind of feel like I'm, I'm kind of scared of the public reaction to it. Yeah, In the UK, we've had lots of like things like stockpiling and things like that. So our supermarkets are, you know, getting emptier and emptier um, and things. And right. They've, they've kind of been a little bit, uh, and I don't know if this is right or not, Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But I kind of feel like they've been quite reactive in the government's approach to the coronavirus in the UK. Um, I mean, it was only yesterday. Our schools are still open, and everything. Oh, wow! Wow. Homes and things are still open for now, but they made a decision yesterday to put something in place called social distancing. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've heard about this over oh, there. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yes. Yes. We've got to yes. stay a meter or away from everybody right now, mm -hmm. apparently. So we've got to stay away from everybody. Uh, stay yeah like a meter away from everybody and then they've closed bars and restaurants um, mm -hmm. and theaters and, and stuff like that so yeah people are really kind of self-isolating yeah. at home now and right it's a like, weird time to be alive isn't it, it? it really it's, is weird. it's really it's really bizarre even my professors during my last class because at that time we we had only had two weeks of virtual um classes but as of a couple of days ago, the rest of the semester is virtual classes, but even our professors were like, kind of like, it was nice to see you in person. Like, this is probably the last time we're going to see each other in person. But I've been really surprised because I think, I mean, our government had been very reactive, um, I think for a long time, but now it's becoming a lot more proactive. So mm -hmm. social distancing is so popular and in particularly in Bloomington, Indiana, where I'm at, um, people have been really, really incredible about really maintaining, um, you know, if they're healthy and, and they're not one of the high risk individuals and they're staying at home still 
and um, you know there yeah it's it's really it's been really um, actually uh, really exciting and it's it's really made me see the uh, sort of morality of, of people and, and trying to protect people that they don't even really know and so I think that's been really powerful and really it's been really wonderful to see people actually taking it seriously even though they're you know if they get coronavirus they might be you know able to recover pretty quickly. Yeah. It, it is, there's something kind of amusing about it for me because like so for years and years and years I have been obsessed with my hand sanitizer and disinfecting surfaces and all that and they have mocked me so bad for ages and now everybody's like oh there's no hand sanitizer anywhere and they're panicking I know I'm just like where have you been like this is my I know life. I know and even with soap I'm like did no one use soap before this no, oh yeah ran out of all soaps and I'm just like okay did, you, did everyone just start now using soap <laughs> And so, uh, yeah, so it's been interesting. It is like, really strange. And, and all the toilet paper is sold out, and I'm like, I really need toilet paper because I have ulcerative colitis and pouchitis. Oh. So it's like, it's yeah, it's been, I, I, I personally have not been prepared for this influx of purchases of necessities for myself. So, yeah, I think if, if anything, like, um, it, it kind of wakes you up to the realization that actually this. This is kind of a, a thing that can happen, you know, like continuously. So maybe we need to be more prepared in life, and maybe it's teaching us to actually, you know, start taking yeah. opportunities now that we can, if we're able to. And absolutely, we don't know what's going to happen, do we? Yeah, and especially with climate change, it's like a whole new issue that like we need to be more prepared for this type of stuff and I think it's this is a great you know initial lesson um hopefully it is the last but I think it's a really great lesson for for our our community to be um, prepared and just to know how to feel you know during these situations as much as possible and prepare for that yeah I think one thing before we go one thing that has kind of annoyed me a little bit about the whole <laughs> coronavirus thing yeah. is that like for for years and years and years going back you know people with invisible illnesses and chronic illnesses and disabilities whatever you want to call them um they go into their employers and say and their employers are like oh no you can't work from home you can't do this you can't do that you know it's it's like completely blanked out but now like everybody's is sick and it's like well everybody must work from home and, and you know it's all of a sudden become really possible so and then, oh, yes <laughs> you yes know? so many have Democracies have have came to light. Yes, absolutely. And even with our healthcare system, like being able to accommodate certain people and like get them care as fast as possible. I mean, you're completely right with the working from home thing. I mean, I find that incredibly kind of hilarious in a way because it's like you know you're you're being so explicitly hypocritical right now, um, which is great that you know employers are taking the step to really promote social distancing. But you know, it is true for our community that we've really been. Um, silence in that way for so long and, and I guess this will bring up a lot of um, talking points after this pandemic yeah and hopefully soon <laughs> just imagine people going in can't you were like well you did it for coronavirus like yeah exactly <laughs> exactly so it might encourage a whole lot more of remote working anyway right right it's a more efficient thing personally Right, right. And giving people that option sincerely, like when they're on days that they're not feeling well is to just yeah. stay at home is really empowering, I think, too. And, and, you know, when you want to go into work, it's completely different because some people prefer that option. But to have that option always available is, I think, yeah. it gives a lot of security for a lot of our community. It does. And I think it'd be better for businesses as well in the long term, yeah. because you know, they don't need all these huge, massive buildings that they're paying so much money for. If they oh my gosh. emphasize that, you know, off right, that, right. You know, working, even if it's just a few days of the week, you know, so it can right, be right. or whatever in the office. Yeah, and... absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Some interesting things, I think. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Great. <laughs>